Rage. The desire to let anger take control. To solve every problem in the simplest way possible. To let the beast inside of you free. And to kill everyone who stands before you. This is the first in the Seven Sins builds. Specially adapted characters from a book I'd been writing many years ago. I hope that you all enjoy this slightly different style of build, and will end up looking forward to seeing the others in the coming weeks. Rage was a good starting point. She needed someone who would draw out the strength from other soldiers, who could lead by example and weed out the weak. His unbridled ferocity had led to him spending as much time in solitary as on the battlefield. Getting him aboard would be as simple as setting him free. When she appeared at his cell and released him, the giant of a man didn't show the slightest sign of gratitude. As she explained to him that she needed someone of his talents to lead men into battle, he seemed to grow more interested, eager for the prospect of spilling blood. The smile that began to grow on his face made him look demonic, and the network of scars and burn marks covering him made it difficult to believe he was even human. Reports varied, but the man had suffered enough damage to kill most men a dozen times over, and no doctor quite understood how he endured so much pain. It was obvious to her that the man had used a variety of drugs to enhance both his strength and endurance, but this didn't dispel the fact that he was still incredibly powerful on his own. She knew that the man could be improved with her own training and experiments, and convincing him of the same was not difficult. After the procedure, he became even more terrifying. He appeared to have grown even larger than before, and his muscles had stretched out his skin, coming close to tearing it and creating more scars to add to his body. His immediate reaction upon waking was to grab the nearest scientist and crush the man's skull in his hand, killing him instantly and letting his limp body fall to the ground. The other scientists fled away from the man, but she walked in closer. The man was now a beast, but she knew how to control him. As long as she steered his ferocity in the right direction, he would be a valuable asset to her. As the captain of his own squad, he led by example, charging towards the enemy and tearing them apart, limb by limb. His men treated him like a god. Each one of them tried to follow his example and gain his favour, but none of them ever came close to his strength or brutality. When the rebellion against her began, this fact caused many problems. His men were loyal purely to him, and although his strength had worked exceptionally well to bring forth the strongest soldiers, in the end it had just made her own survival even harder to ensure. After the rebellion, Rage ended up having to masquerade as a civilian, living with one of the others, and trying to contain his desire to kill. The injuries he had sustained during the fighting had made him far weaker than before, and he needed time to heal. Time wasn't in his favour though, and he will end up having to flee to the vault before he regains his full strength. Rage has Strength 10, Perception 1, Endurance 7, Charisma 1, Intelligence 6, Agility 1, and a Luck of 3. Strength is the primary stat of this build, and having it maxed out at the start of the game ensures we will be able to immediately deal out plenty of damage. Perception is one of our dump stats for this build. As we don't use guns, we won't need this stat as we will either have a 95% chance or 0% chance to hit him that. Endurance is at 7. We need to be fairly tough in order to close distance with enemies and stay in the fight, so plenty of hit points are needed. Charisma is our next dump stat. Although Rage was a captain who was looked up to by his men, it was never for his charm, but instead due to his incredible strength and his inspiring presence on the battlefield. Rage is surprisingly intelligent, and we have a stat at 6. He has a good mind, but it is almost always overshadowed by his constant anger, giving the impression of him as a mindless beast. Despite this, he still can use his mind to overcome problems rapidly, and doesn't have to rely purely on brute strength. Agility is our final dump stat. Years of being shot, stabbed, and burnt has led him to moving far slower than he used to, this does mean that we won't want to focus on VATS for this build, and will instead focus on using action points for sprinting and power attacks. Lastly, Luck is sat at 3. Although certainly not the most fortunate of individuals, Rage still has the occasional lucky break come through for him. The essential perks of this build are Iron Fist, Big Leagues, Armourer and Blacksmith. 
Iron Fist and Big Leagues are the primary damage perks of the build, making us equally powerful with both unarmed and melee weapons. Out of these two, Big Leagues will normally take priority, but leveling them equally is advised. Armourer is going to significantly help out with our survivability. Not only does it ensure we have a correct basic armour for the build, but it also goes a long way to improve our power armour for whenever we want to suit up. Blacksmith is great for this build. We want to be using a variety of different close quarters weapons, and Blacksmith helps to improve all of them, and will even improve our power armour. The recommended perks I've included are Life Giver, Rooted, Chemist, Chem Resistant, and Adamantium Skeleton. Life Giver is a favourite perk of mine, as it gets you constant health regeneration once you hit the third rank at level 20. This, along with the health boost, goes a long way to keeping us alive as we travel the wastes. Rooted is great for any no guns build due to the huge increase in damage output and defence. As long as you're standing still, you are a lot more powerful, and with a low agility character like this, chances are you won't be running around constantly. Chemist and Chem Resistant work together to make drugs so much more effective. We won't get addicted and can craft any drugs we will need, including the incredibly powerful Fury. Adamantium Skeleton is great at higher levels. Not having to deal with crippled limbs in the middle of a fight ensures that we don't slow the rate at which we are killing our enemies. The role-playing perks I went for with this build are Pain Train, Science, and Bloody Mess. Although we aren't a specific power armor build, we will be using it on occasion, and Pain Train just makes it more entertaining to use, sending people flying when we charge into them. Science is a crafting perk that you may not need to worry about, but if you want all the power armor options and a rocket-powered baseball bat, then it may be worth getting this one too. Last of all is Bloody Mess. The flat damage boost to this perk is worth it on its own, but the over-the-top effect of people turning into blood and lumps of meat fits well with rage. He is the sort of person who will tear apart a human body with his bare hands and pummel it down to its base elements if he sees fit. You will want to side with the Nuka World Raiders when playing this build. More specifically, you will want to primarily help out the pack, but I'd also advise not shunning the Disciples. The bonuses from siding with these factions will help make Rage even stronger, and I'll also mention at this point that it's worth grabbing the Scav magazines when you head over to Nuka World for even more bonuses. The recommended companion for this build is Strong. The Super Mutant fits in well alongside Rage, and both wield melee weapons with deadly effectiveness. Keep an eye out for Super Mutant armor to equip onto Strong, and if you happen to get your hands on Grognak's axe, then you can always have Strong become an axe-wielding Super Mutant. If you don't like Strong as a companion, then the next best bet would probably be Gage. Try to get him to not use any guns if you want to keep the theme of the build a bit more solid, and don't be too nice to him when he starts acting soft. When playing as Rage, you want to use all the best melee and unarmed weapons you can get your hands on. My personal favourites to use would be the Shish Kebab for melee and Deathclaw Gauntlet for unarmed, but there are plenty of other good choices. What will most likely decide what you're going to use will be whatever good legendary drops you happen to come across, but feel free to let me know in the comments what you're planning on using anyway. For armour, you wear Grognak's costume, heavy buttressed raider legs, and improved disciples spiked arms. Grognak's costume is great for boosting our offensive power, but isn't the best looking piece for this character. Fortunately, the heavy buttressed raider legs cover up the slightly garish boots, and also add to our resistances, and the improved disciples spiked arms look great, making the character look far more intimidating. If you want to wear power armour, then I recommend using the overboss armour. It's worth noting that, due to Grognak's costume, you will normally deal more damage outside of power armour than you do when suited up. However, your resistances will be significantly higher when you encase yourself in a giant metal suit. Switch between the two as needed in order to best suit the situation you will be going up against. Rage is an incredibly aggressive, offensive close quarters character. Walk straight up to your opponent and tear them limb from limb in as brutal a fashion as possible. Use drugs to make the character incredibly strong, 
depending on the difficulty you choose to play on, you may not need to rely on drugs at all, or you may need to use them extensively. Thanks to the chemist perk, chems are insanely strong, and I would personally recommend dosing up on Fury and Psycho buff before any challenging fight. Fury in particular is great for a melee build, increasing damage output by 50%. For roleplaying, focus on just waging war and succumbing to the rage inside of you. If you get angry at an NPC, then kill them. If a quest is bugging you, you go on a killing spree instead. Whenever you start to feel the rage build up inside of you, allow it to take over, and do whatever you see fit to satiate your bloodlust. If you're completely sane and stable, you may struggle a little to get into the character, but if you do, then just focus on following the path of evil. Thanks to all of you for watching this build through to the end. Make sure to comment below telling me what you thought of the backstory. It's a very different one due to the nature of the build, and hopefully the whole set of them will fit together quite nicely to create a better story than any build has ever conveyed before. If you enjoyed the build, then give it a like, and subscribe if you're new around here, so that you keep getting these great videos.